So I wanted to see if I could beat Pokemon Radical Red with only using Sandshrews. Now, Sandshrew is my favorite Pokemon of all time, and I love the game Radical Red. It's one of the favorite, one of my favorite games of all time. Um, I wanted to give myself a different type of challenge because normally I just try to do Nuzlocke's of the game. And this time I wanted to try a different little challenge. And to start that challenge, I had to find a Sandshrew or a Sand Slash. So it took me quite a few attempts of loading up the game getting my starters, getting the dex nav, and searching all of the encounters that are available. Uh, it took me quite a few attempts. Initially, I was doing completely randomized, and I wasn't having any luck. I eventually, I was recording this offline, and then I decided I was getting kind of bored doing it by myself, so I decided to stream it. This is gonna be a process. <sighs> I'm tempted to just, I'm gonna go live while I do this. It's gonna be random little, short streams I'm going to do from time to time. But eventually on the 10th attempt, we did finally find a sand true in the water and it was an old rod. So I was able to catch them. And but shortly after I, I had it's gonna be six a sand trues in my box. Ah, oh. wait, surf and old rod. So the goal that I had with this is I was going to use regular Sandshrew, the Cantonian Sandshrew, which is the pure ground type. And I was also going to find the Alolan Sandshrew, so I'd have the Ice Steel version. The challenge that comes along with this is I have no fighting resist. I have a four times fighting weakness and I have a four times fire weakness um, and a couple other weaknesses along the way, uh, which makes my team very one dimensional, uh, it's very physically bulky and physically offensive, but very slow and not great on the special side. So this game is going to create a lot of unique challenges that I'm going to have to figure out ways to overcome it if I want to be able to beat the game. Another thing, the reason why I was keeping track of the attempts is because I don't know for sure if I'm going to get good abilities. The abilities I did randomize, and I don't know for sure what abilities I'll end up with. It could be very difficult with certain abilities, or it might be much easier. The base form of Sandshrew ended up with Trace, which wasn't phenomenal, but not the end of the world, because I knew it was going to be evolving into a Sandshrew, so I was patient with it. Brock wasn't very difficult. Either was Faulkner, it was very easy. This is an easy, easy dub. Yeah, easy. Brock, I knew that he was giving you no issue, obviously. And then we got the Sand Slash Evolved. We check its ability and it has Cursed Body. Cursed Body, I don't believe it even actually works correctly in this game, uh, but it, not a negative ability, so it's not really the end of the world. Uh, we run through Mount Moon. We keep cruising along, rival battle, it doesn't slow us down for a minute. He has the Charmander team, so that means later on he will have a Charizard. Uh, but at this point, early on in the game, it's not a Nuzlocke challenge, it's pretty easy to run through this. I decided to skip the Bugsy battle because my Pokemon can't learn U-Turn, and it's the only benefit you get of battling Bugsy. So I moved on ahead and got up to... Uh, I went and got the good rod because earlier on in the game, I did see that if I had the good rod and I fished, I could get the Alolan Sand Slash. So fast forward a little bit, caught six more of those bad boys, and we were ready to take on Misty. Go. Cool. We got six of each. The ability we had on the Alolan Sand Slash is Fatal Precision, which makes all super effective moves 100% accurate and 30% stronger. So it's a very, very good ability. But one of the things I discovered with this team is I can put spiky shield on both of the sand slashes, rapid spin to clear any hazards and increase my speed and setting up spikes on the other side as well. So a big theme for this team is to be uh, taking physical hits with spiky shield, making them phase out, take chip damage from the, um, take chip damage from the hazards and continuously whittle down the team slowly, but surely. The hazards stacked up made a huge difference and that is going to become a theme that we ended up using for a lot of the battles in this game beautiful 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 look at that two gyms down after we we're done with misty we moved on to the rival battle on the boat on the ssn cruise through that and the mono electric team was not much of a challenge at all for my mono ground team that i had so i was able to cruise through that and we go for another bulldoze and we live all right cool there we go. After we're done with that, we go through the cave. We go through the dark cave. We get over to Celadon and I discover a Munchlax. And if you guys don't know about Munchlax in this game, it always holds leftovers. So I was able to farm a bunch of, a bunch of these, 
steal a bunch of leftovers. That way I can have some for my team. And then also, this also unlocks the point in the game where you can check hidden abilities. So for the Lolan Sand Slash, we got Sand Rush. And for the Cantonian Sand Slash, we have Heat Proof, which is a huge, huge help to the team because it gives me a fire resist that I desperately need. Now for the Erica Gym, once again, the spiky shield spikes combo along with the fatal precision super effective boost for my priority ice shard for the sand slash made that battle very easy. Um, again, once with this Giovanni battle, I believe it was my first try with this one as well. Uh, once you are done with Giovanni, though, the hardest part of this game that I knew was going to be a big issue is the double battle. This is an infamous double battle where you have Brendan on your side and he has to hopefully carry his own weight. Dry skin. And that's so a bad. Team that has Valiant shield fire types good. and you had rain dish. has fighting moves. It's um, really yeah, difficult is, for me. I wiped to it so okay. many times. My teammate oh, didn't roll the best abilities. They had Valiant Shield on Xbox, which is pretty solid. But aside from that, it wasn't great. Uh, we got it. There we go. Look at that. I changed my we nature. Lucky enough and get in, in that same battle. Next up, we had the battle Sabrina, it. which I thought was going to be a much more difficult battle. But surprisingly, I don't know what was going on, but my Sand Slashes just wrecked house. I don't know what happened with the, the Radical Red Calculator. You can kind of calculate damage and see how much damage things will do. Um, I calculated things ahead of time and the damage, I did a lot more damage and I was outspeeding things that I wasn't supposed to. So I don't know exactly what the situation was or how that happened, but I will take it. Battle went by pretty smoothly. It never got Trick Room set up and I was able to beat it on the first try, which was very surprising for me. I thought it was going to be a much, much more difficult battle. Now it is. There you go. After being done with Sabrina, there are rematches you have to do. Uh, once again, we're going through Brock, Misty, and Lieutenant Surge. Like I said, those three battles weren't super difficult the first time around. Um, Brock is really weak to ground and steel so and ice. So my team was very good against this one. I think I took it down on my first, maybe second attempt. Didn't take too long. Uh, but then we had Misty, which proved to be an extremely difficult battle. Um, I realized I ended up having to go fight Chuck and get the focus sash from the strategy I tried to use was to spiky shield the physical attackers, whittle them down, set up spikes, toxic, and then also metal burst on my Alolan sand slash came into play. So I ran a focus sash, the Gyarados would set up with the dragon dances and I would metal burst the damage back and it ended up being the saving grace for it. Uh, but I'm starting to discover a lot more challenges along with this playthrough and a lot more I'm going to realize I'm going to have to get a lot more creative to get through some of these further battles. Next up, we have the battle Surge the second time around, and that battle was not very difficult. Took a couple of attempts, um, but really didn't take too much prep. And once again, using Spiky Shield, Toxic, Spikes, ended up stacking up dramatically against this team, and we were able to beat it within just a couple of attempts. It didn't take too long on that one as well. And then we are good. All right, look at that. Once we were done with Surge, we were able to go battle Koga. And this was a battle I really didn't prep for at all. I just ran the same team I was running. I realized it was a team I had a decent matchup against. So I just went to it with the team I had already and just gave it a shot. And I was able to get a Cursed Body on Drapion with his Wicked Blow. So I do know that it does work. Cursed Body ability doesn't work all the time, it seems like, but um, it was working today and uh, we were able to phase them out rock tomb and just let the spikes damage do what they do and we were able to get through this on the first try very surprisingly i thought it was gonna take quite a few attempts just because we're getting later into the game but i was actually surprised with how well these sand slashes were holding up throughout this playthrough i thought it was going to be surprisingly more difficult the double battle and the misty rematch were two extremely difficult battles for sure but aside from that I, we were kind of cruising was that first try? It was. That's crazy. After that battle, I decided to go battle Price, the Ice Gym Leader, and Jasmine, the Steel Gym Leader, because that gets me the Choice Scarf and also the Assault Vest, which are two items that are going to become very clutch as we get further into this, because the Special Defense is not great and the Speed is not great on these Sand Slashes. So these two items are going to be extremely important going forward. After a break of a day or two, we came back to the Sand True Run. I continued back on Cinnabar Island, where you have the battle with May. Uh, which I was not expecting, but I was able to defeat on my first try, surprisingly. 
after we're done with that we're through cinnabar mansion and we go up to blaine which ended up being quite a problem for me uh he has an executor and a skull villain two pokemon that with the sun up gives him a speed boost with chlorophyll and they outspeed my team and they both have grass and fire coverage when you only have a ground type and a steel ice type fire types can be a problem i do have heat proof on my kanto sand slash so i was able to deal with some of the fire types uh, but i just had a really hard time dealing with the grass fire combo i ended up stuck on this battle for longer than i would like to admit um, until i decided that i could set up sand and as soon as i set up the sand and got rid of the sun the executors became slow and i was able to beat the battle first try with sand we rapid spin you die look at that i don't know why i didn't think to change the weather the first time that was very stupid of me now at this point after that you have to go to the cerulean cave and we got to do this infamous double battle where he has a Mewtwo that once you defeat it, it evolves into Mega Mewtwo. Um, I was hoping to get some good abilities on my teammates Pokemon, which we did. He got Desolate Land on his Dialga and he had Trace on his Dragapult to Trace the Intimidate from the Scrafty. So it ended up working out and we actually beat it on our second try, which was really surprising. Uh, after that, you run over to Claire and I had to work on this team a little bit, took a few attempts, but once I actually sat down and took a second, um, and I got lucky with a couple bad plays by the AI. I was able to beat this gym in quite a few tries. Didn't take too many. It was pretty, pretty straightforward. And after that, that is eight badges down. And with having eight badges, uh, we can start working towards the Elite Four, which I honestly did not think we were even going to get this far with this playthrough. Uh, we ran through Victory Road. Nothing really surprising came up, so I just skipped it out. Battle the Creator, and the moment of truth comes up when we figure out who Lorelei is going to bring is she going to have the rain team which is way worse for me or will they have the ice team which is something i could definitely figure out a lot easier than the rain team or now this is where it gets interesting uh, please tell me the ice team fuck it's the rain team all right and unfortunately for me, my luck was not great. And we got the water team. So she leads with a Polyrath and Poly Toad, uh, which outspeed my Sand Slashes, unless I have a Choice Scarfed. Uh, they both outspeed me and just get to destroy me with one hit. I attempted this battle a couple times quickly just to see if I could get something going because I was really not hopeful for it. Tried a few times, tried some different item combinations, and I kind of just decided that this is not gonna not gonna work out i lose the hydro pump from walking wake dragon pulse and hurricane will one shot the ground type hydro pump will one shot the steel type water spout outspeeds and sweeps my team hydro pump out sweeps my sweeps my team from iron bundle i literally don't think i can beat the, i don't think i could beat the water team that might have to be <sighs> knowing now that if I save before going in, I can force which team I get. I think I'm going to have to run it back, run a new run, try to get Sandshrews again. I'm not even joking. I really think it's a waste of time to sit here and try to get through this battle. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this challenge. I really had a good time recording it and playing Radical Red in this different way. Normally, I just nuzlocke the game, but it was a fun challenge to try to take you know, just my, my boy Sandrew and try to find a way to get through the game. Uh, like I said, I don't know if it would have been possible for me to get through the Elite Four with the water team. I'm sure there's a strategy I might have been overlooking, but um, I think I want to do this challenge again in the future. I have been suggested Tauros because they got the Blaze Tauros and the Water Tauros. Uh, things like Politoed, got multiple evolutions, Slow King, all that. So if you guys have any suggestions of something you would like to see me try, let me know in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.